Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Teng Fang Yi, and I am the marketing director at Napier Healthcare, charged with taking a message of empowerment through digital transformation for today's healthcare. Yes, I am your host for this webinar. On behalf of the team of Napier Rights talking to you, uh, to you today, I must say a, say a big thank you to you all. Thank you for taking the time off your busy schedules to join us as we talk about the challenges facing elderly care facilities and delve into how a digital transformation may well enable operators like you to overcome them. As you can see on screen right now, we have a lot to cover on the agenda. So we promise we shall make our presentation short and sweet and leave as much time as possible toward the end for questions from you. Finding out more about what concerns healthcare leaders are at the heart of what we do. So we are constantly looking to establish, maintain, and enhance engagements with you as a partner in the provision of increasingly better care to an aging world for the long term. And that is why Q&A is always more important to us. So let's start. First of all, who we are. You don't have to read this, we will share the slides with you, but it's just a brief snapshot of what Napier Healthcare Solutions is and what it represents. We are a specialist information and communication technology provider to the healthcare industry. We're based in Singapore, but global in impact across the Asia Pacific, Africa, Australia, the US, the Middle East, and Europe. Our solutions portfolio covers both acute care and intermediate and long-term care. So we power hospitals and clinics, hospital and clinic networks, and other specialized medical facilities. And we power nursing homes, retirement villages, and other elderly care facilities, as well as community healthcare providers delivering home care services. Our body of work in the past 20 years has clearly made an impression on the healthcare industry. If you look at the bottom bar, and we continue to receive industry recognition, most recently inclusion, in the class global EMR market share and population health reports, and multiple wins in award programs by Aging Asia and Frost and Sullivan. Now for our speakers today. As mentioned earlier, I'm the one at the bottom. I'm your host, and my name is Teng Fang Yi. I'm the marketing director at Napier, and I'm charged with taking the message of empowerment through digital transformation for today's healthcare. And if you see on to the left is our elder care specialist. His name is Ryan Gillig. His official title is product manager for Asia Pacific and Japan. And he brings his 13 years of training and practical experience in engineering and product management to bear on his current position. As the leader behind the development of the nursing home solution, Ryan devotes himself to working very closely with customers on how best to put together a system that covers every aspect of an elder care facility's operations. He most recently helped a nursing home in Singapore win a national award for outstanding efficiency and productivity gains derived through the strategic use of IT. On the right is our transformation expert at Napier Healthcare. Solutions manager is his official title and belies a great track record of the work that he's done across the world. He has more than a decade's experience in the enterprise and healthcare IT industry. He has led digital transformation efforts of organizations in North America, Africa, Asia, and now in Australia. Among these major initiatives that he has done are the move from manual to paperless processing and workflows for a private hospital, <clears throat> for a private hospital in Botswana and the more recent deployment of an advanced telehealth system for a nursing home in Australia. And right at the top, my co-host uh, co for today is our Enterprise Sales Director for Asia. Mr. Ken Seng has seen through more enterprise and healthcare IT implementations across the big region of Asia than the rest of us put together. In fact, he probably has enough time on the job as Napier Healthcare itself. He has been in the industry for more than 25 years and has managed technology accounts for happy customers during that time. He will be co-hosting the Q&A session with me later after the presentations and the demo. Next, 
a reminder of things to come. That's in the agenda. It's to set the stage for discussions today. I say it's a reminder of things to come because these are things you probably already know. It's just that sometimes when you're busy, uh, you have too many problems to settle, you actually put them out of your mind and you forget. And then things move on, suddenly it's a year down the road. So a reminder of things about the silver tsunami and what it means to elder care. Some big numbers, big scary numbers I hope. The world is aging. By 2030, the number of older persons well, the, the number of older persons in the world, in the developed world, will be 375 million. The number for developing regions will be 1 billion. And it gets bigger and more frightening. By 2050, 20% of the entire world's population will be aged 60 or older. And 80% of the world's aged in developing countries. Next, those numbers translate into financial numbers, unfortunately. The cost of elderly care in Asia, which we are in right now, for 2015, two years ago, was $500 billion. 15 years from now, uh, 15 years from then, it will be $2.75 Now, I cite Singapore here because Singapore has often been cited for its great and high efficiency uh, of its healthcare system. So, even in high efficiency healthcare system Singapore, in 2016, last year, the cost of elderly care was $5 billion. Move forward 14 years, it's going to be almost 10 times that figure. Hang on to those numbers for now. You're wondering, okay, these are just numbers in the industry. How does it impact me? I run a 50 bed nursing home facility. You know what? It does. And it translates into all these things. Cost to the industry means cost to you. You may not be the, 50, uh, the 5 billion figure there, but you're somewhere there. You're in that figure, you're a composite number of that. Okay, cost is a huge issue with you. Staffing is a huge issue with you. Medical, qualified medical personnel to do the job. You may not have enough. You may have problems hiring, retaining them. That will impact those two factors up there will impact on quality of care. And as your resident population or that you're trying to accommodate or those that you already have keeps piling on, it will impact quality of care. And part of the quality of care picture is the medication management um, um, part and the errors that may happen as a result. So those are the issues you have to bear in mind as you move on and we, as we talk about. Next, I'm gonna pass this on the presentation on to our elder care specialists who will show you how any nursing home facility or any medical facility that provides um, elderly care can actually counter some of these challenges and actually deliver value to it. So, uh, Ryan, please take the stage. Thanks, Fangi. My name is Ryan Michael Gellick, and uh, I've led the design and development of Nursing Home Solution at Napier. I'm very passionate about long-term care and quite excited to bring innovations in the area and scaling our solutions to impact as many facilities as possible in, and improve productivity and quality of care. So with the problems um, that are being faced in the long-term care sector, there are scalable solutions available through automation and IT enablement. Investments here, uh, as you can see, investments can be made actually in IT hardware, um, in long-term care, software, cloud computing, network communication systems, and data, which actually results in organizational transformation, in efficiencies, quality of care, and safety. There's an increasing amount of data um, and there's a lot that we can actually glean from all this data and this list here shows some of the major areas where IT can actually impact. Um, there's also improving levels of access worldwide and uh, which has resulted in some unprecedented transparency and insights. So first of all here is population health management 
and uh, predictive analytics. So since there's an aggregation of patient data, uh, providers can now make use of all that data to improve clinical and financial outcomes. Next is care coordination. So with network systems and mobile uh, devices. So there's patient follow-up with better patient engagement and the transparency of this information. And lastly, this uh, another area is uh, clinical decision support, which enables clinical staff to get intelligently filtered information to improve decision making. So all of this in turn reduces medical errors, you know, raises the standard of care, uh, reduces uh, healthcare consumption and improve outcome. Uh, this results in you know, changing quite a number of industries uh, within long-term care and healthcare, and pharmaceutical even, and even medical device offerings. Um, so let me walk you through some of the benefits of automation in healthcare. Um, first, we know that um, with labor savings, we know that automation actually saves time and labor by actually replacing the manual intensive tasks those menial tasks that your staff may already be doing that can actually be better done by a machine or by a computer. There's no need uh, to eliminate employees, but you can actually elevate them into higher value added roles or higher functioning roles so that they can make use of their clinical expertise, clinical background. Um, second is uh, there's improved quality and consistency. IT systems, you may know are not subject to human error, to fatigue or even stress. So they help provide tools for consistent and improved quality of care. Third is reduced waste. We know that um, with, there's a reduction of waste from paper and some of the forms that um, you know, old some nursing homes uh, are using. Um, and of course there's uh, savings in terms of time spent on the phone to manually uh, attend to patient queries and ATT process to calls or even you know face-to-face -face interactions with patients and their next of kin. Um, there's increased predictib uh, predictability outcomes. So now with patients following standardized care path, so it allows them to stay on track towards uh, predicted outcomes. There's also higher throughput. So now staff can uh, actually handle a larger number of patients, a larger volume of patients at a time. Uh, with automation tools, um, using the computer, using cloud computing, and using our software. So you can use reports um, and, uh, you know, processing of these reports uh, are done uh, in bulk. Dashboards show some clinical trends uh, and even some of the top information or KPIs that you need to understand or you need to uh, fix on a daily basis, some work lists. And uh, there's some automated billing that can be done using the system. So there's a higher overall throughput that can be done by your staff. There's also uh, data-driven insights. So there's a wealth of information, there's a wealth of data that can be used to improve performance and optimize care workflows. Um, so data, when you uh, migrate to a system, uh, data is collected for every transaction. Now this can be used to close the feedback loop and you know, constantly improve efficiency, accuracy, and reduce the overall workload. So what is the overall impact of automation technology? Uh, according to a Council for Affordable Quality Healthcare, or CAQH, um, some of you may know this, um, after studying nearly 5 billion transactions in 2015, an estimated 8 billion of savings, they have computed, an estimated 8 billion in savings can be derived from automation in healthcare alone. I will be walking you through now, uh, we've looked at the industry uh, long-term care and the benefits of IT in, in long-term care. Now let us zoom in further to a specific case study, a specific nursing home in Singapore. Uh, this is uh, the case study for Liamui Old Age Home in partnership with Napier Healthcare. So Liamu is actually a two facility nursing home with 110 beds. Um, and uh, we've partnered with them for IT enablement and automation. Uh, they've now been using our Napier nursing home solution 
for the past uh, year plus. Um, and uh, we have gone through the design thinking approach with them, uh, doing their process reengineering, walking through with their users, understand their problems, finding solutions to their problems, and translating all the manual processes that they've done into an actual automated system, which they're now using. So they, we've done process reengineering, architecture design, development, implementation, and integration with them. And as a result of that, um, with their use of our system, um, they've been awarded in Singapore the National Health IT Excellence Award uh, just a couple of months ago for enhancing care uh, quality and improving productivity. So some of the numbers here you see, uh, those that are actually impacting, those that they're already realizing, some of the benefits that they're getting. You see here, there's an improvement in 62% in time for billing processes, 62%. 57% improvement or reduction in time for care administration, specifically for medication administration. A 70% improvement or reduction in time in inbound referral processing. Uh, in Singapore, we're interfacing with IRMS or a referral management system, and we've cut down the time by 70%. Lastly, uh, what we've illustrated here and what we've measured is a 52% improvement or reduction in data sharing with referral systems. So a testimonial given by uh, the administrator of Liamui, uh, Kim Yen, he says, NHS encourages greater efficiencies and facilitates decision making. So we, we achieved significant operational savings of 14.3 man hours and 46 man hours per resident to process admission of referrals through integration between the National Integrated Referral Management System and ILTC portal system. So having seen that, the processes, the uh, the improvements that they've made. Let us zoom in even closer uh, into each of these processes that we've measured. Let's look at the um, build generation, uh, which is one of the bottlenecks that we've automated as part of NHS, our software solution. So the manual process uh, starts with listing down all the consumables of the resident, some other recurring charges, then you do the um, verification of the bill, you know, contacting the next of kin um, and recording the payment. So all of these is now replaced with an automatic process of entering onto the system all the consumables uh, as you uh, work on your nursing activities, nursing procedures, doing inventory. Um, it's now automated because it's all in the system recorded. You enter it one time, you don't need to re-enter it again. Um, and you, the bill is now automatically generated can generate it ad hoc or on a monthly basis. Now all this translates into a reduction from 48 hours down to 18 hours per month, a 62% reduction in time, just for build generation. Another process that we've optimized is uh, in, uh, inbound referral processing. So Liamoy is actually using a separate system before uh, we came in to get referrals. So admitting referral patients onto the system, they need to enter a separate system. Um, and entering pre-admission assessments and financial counseling, which has to be done by a medical social worker. So in the new system, after we've automated, you know, data is now automatically exported from the NHS system to IRMS or the referral management system. And once staff completes entering the assessment records, and remaining clinical records, um, patient demograph, all the patient information um, and within the allowed parameters. So the successful referral can even be automatically admitted. So this all has resulted in a reduction of 70% from 66 minutes down to 20 minutes per referral process. So let us look into a third um, uh, process so, which is involving a data sharing with the government portal. Uh, this is actually the ILTC or long-term care portal 
uh, by the government of Singapore. So every quarter data, which includes some uh, resident status, uh, clinical details, leave details, discharge details, it is all sent to ILTC or to this government portal. So the manual process comparing it, it starts with logging into the separate portal. Um, they didn't have the NHS system yet then. Then update the resident status there, clinical details, leave details, discharge details, as I mentioned. Then entering the billing details for subsidized residents. Then generating uh, the report, then verifying and submitting it to the portal. Now in the new automated process, once the resident information has been updated in our system, it is just a few clicks to verify the information and submit for each resident. Now, by automating, we actually reduce the time from 63 minutes originally down to 30 minutes per resident or a 52% reduction. Um, the fourth process that we're looking uh, in closer detail here is medication administration. Uh, with the manual process, um, beginning with you know, checking the name in your medication card, the time, uh, checking back the blister pack, information for five rights of the patient, um, and then finally administering the medication and logging that uh, information on paper, on record. Now with the automated system, with the automated process, it's as easy as scanning the barcode or searching for a patient, you know, pulling up the resident records um, for uh, patient pertinent information, you know, the allergies, etc., and the schedule for medication. You physically check the blister pack, do the five rights, do all the checks, and then administering medicine and updating them onto NHS. So that has translated into our 50, 57% reduction, sorry, from 121 minutes down to 52 minutes per resident. And uh, uh, now that I've just shown you the process flow, where comparing a manual and an automated process, let me hand over uh, to Shirish Totam, uh, our colleague, uh, solutions manager and transformation expert who will be providing a high level overview of some of the processes that I've just mentioned, as well as some of the uh, features that you have, you want to, you may want to look out to improve your um, operations in your nursing. On to you, Shirish. Right, so uh, today my intention would be to provide an an overview of uh, Napier's nursing home system, or simply I'm going to refer it to as the NHS. Um, I will run you through the some of the core features uh, of the NHS. Uh, definitely, I won't be going into the too many details, but I'm going to touch upon some of the important functionalities that are covered as part of the NHS. So this, as you see, this is my login screen uh, or my home screen. Where I'm going to log in as an administrator today. So. Uh, you, uh, so the system supports our role-based access control, which means that the user who's logging in gets access to the functionality and the data in the system based upon the privilege and the access rights that are assigned to him or her. Again, uh, NHS also supports a multi-facility concept where you, where you have, where if you have a group of facilities under a single enterprise, Okay, so you could, uh, you know, you view or get uh, collate all the data under your enterprise, and have access to that data as per the user's role and access rights. If you see here, I have uh, multiple facilities uh, that I could choose to access the information for that facility, or I could just go in and log into the enterprise enterprise where I will have access to the data across all my facilities under in, in my organization. Um, and what we have done is, you know, we have broadly categorized the functionality into five different buckets. Over here on the top, you see configurations. This is the place where uh, you set up the master data, uh, create the users, assign roles to these users, and, and, uh, and other such uh, you know, the administrative functionalities, and typically these are all related to the setting up of the uh, NHS system. And then you have the pre-admission management, which deals with the functionality of for registering uh, your clients, uh, the referral management, and going through the process of pre-admission till, till admission. Then you have resident management. Again, this is a very administrative activity. Uh, uh, 
typically a back office operations, I would say, uh, such as probably, you know, creating uh, or raising leaves or, you know, creating discharges or uh, 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 raising bills and invoices for your clients. Care management, I would say, is, would be the widely used module in the system. And, you know, this uh, pro, uh, caters to the functionality of the clinical care records of your clients. Uh, this is the module which will be accessed by your care staff, with, by your nurses, doctors, physios, and so on. And finally, you have the inventory and the stock management. So uh, I will run you, I'll start off with the pre-admission management and, uh, over here. And you will also notice that, you know, when I go into these modules, you know, first thing you will see is something what we call as the dashboards, which will provide uh, some data and statistics relevant to that module and to the user's role. So if a doctor logs in, he probably, you know, he will get a different kind of view uh, uh, in his dashboard compared to a nurse's dashboard. And in the pre-admission assessment, OEC, you see some statistics, how many referrals you have, how many uh, subsidized ones, how many private ones, of which how many I have opened or how many I've accepted or rejected. So this will help me analyzing this scenario and I can see what is what are my bed occupancy rates and take appropriate actions to these uh, pending referrals or open uh, referrals. And also you see that you know the what we call as the resident cards at the bottom so these are all the or your client cards so these are all the client cards which are still uh, you know having different statuses like you know some of them are active referrals and some of them uh, you know or or in different stages of pre-admission i would say <clears throat> and through this uh, through the pre-admission management module we can also uh, integrate with any referral management uh, systems by the government agencies. For example, in Singapore, we have integrated with the Singapore's IRMS referral management system. So the referrals from IRMS flow into the Napier's NHS and the administrator can accept those referrals or reject those referrals. And once if they're accepted, they directly are converted in order the demographic details and various other details are directly come over here into the system and it eliminates the, uh, and it eliminates the, uh, uh, the re-entry of the uh, details that are required under registration. Or the uh, client can also be registered manually over here in the system and uh, uh, by capturing uh, all this relevant information. I'm going to select a, a resident who is already registered in the system for the interest of, in our, you know, inter, interest of our time and show you what we capture as a part of the pre-admission process. Over here, if you see, uh, it's like, you know, step-by-step -step process where you first capture the demographic details, then go ahead and capture the next of kin details and uh, the financial information. Now, this financial information could also be any subsidy levels that or any subsidies that the client is receiving from the government or any insurance schemes that he has so that when the billing kicks in or when the billing is done, so it is done as per the subsidies that are available for this client. And there are others, or you can also capture other information related to your clinicals and any uh, documents that the, uh, that the client is already carrying, could be a pathology report or a report from or a discharge summary from a hospital. And on the left-hand side, you will see the pre-admission timeline with various actions and the timestamps on it. This will help the administrator track uh, like which step uh, or when, was, when were these steps performed and also figure out uh, you know, efficiencies or inefficiencies in the process of pre-admission. Once a person, once a client gets admitted into the system, then you know, I would go into the care management and over here the uh, the client starts appearing in the uh, residence list of the uh, you know if in the residence list for the nurse or the doctor and again as i said earlier so if you have the nurse dashboard uh, this is what you see here is nurse dashboard and similarly you have the dashboards for different roles for your doctor physio pharmacist a dietitian and so on and on the top uh, for the nurse dashboard, uh, if you see here, these are uh, this gives you an 
again, you know, statistics of what are the tasks that are pending as of today. And if you see here, as of today, there are still admission assessments that are not done, which are like 347 in my case. Um, and you can also see what are the on-demand assessments that are pending or any nursing tasks that are uh, pending for, or that will be done today. I can go, also go into details and see if there are any, is there's any particular activity that is scheduled and to be done today by just, you know, probably just clicking on that. And then, you know, it shows me all those residents in my list here that, you know, these are the residents for whom I need to perform, in this case, wound monitoring. I'll just go back to the dashboard over here. Just give me a second. Yeah, I'm back here onto my nurse dashboard. And, uh, and each of Of this, you know, I want to uh, do perform to have on my resident card. Or if I want to go into the details of this resident, I'll just click on the resident card and which takes me into the clinical summary of the resident. And this is the place where you have various portlets of information which, uh, that provide, uh, you know, some clinical details of the uh, client. And if you see here, there's some alerts, some vital signs, and also shows what are the pending activities for this resident. And you know, we also kind of categorize these activities by into different groups. Over here you see some medication related activities and others. And the care plans that the client is currently on, the diagnosis, the medication list, uh, and so on. And if the care staff wishes to add more information from here, for example, I want to add some uh, vital, some vital details. So I will just do that by entering some uh, capturing data here, without ha without having to leave this screen. So I'm still on my clinical uh, information screen and will be able to capture uh, the information uh, right from the screen. <clears throat> So I could do that similarly, you know, if you want to add a care plan, I could do that uh, as well from uh, the same screen. And uh, I also wanted to show you, uh, you know, another feature from the nursing dashboard where, you know, uh, the, the good part is, you know, over here you have an indicator showing, you know, what are the pending activities in, case, in this case in, for this client, there, there's a on admission assessment, uh, which was not, which are still not done. It shows that there is only one out of three done. And you see there are some nursing assessment assessments still pending. So the nurse can quickly go ahead over here and go to through this list and perform the nursing assessments. Now this list can be as comprehensive or as simple as possible, depending upon your organizational requirements. And part of these assessments can be mandatory or not, again, or which depend upon your uh, organizational requirements. So let me go back into the resident or the client details, uh, clinical details. <clears throat> and if I, and over here on the left-hand side, you'll see there are various other options if I want to perform some specific activities. For example, uh, you know, the assessments, okay, I can go here and see all the assessments that are scheduled for this client. And if I want to capture any data against this uh, particular assessment, I do that simply by clicking over here, which takes me into the assessment details. And once I do the assessment, I can capture a reassessment date. And what happens is on the date of re readmission, this assessment again starts appearing in the list of pending activities for this client and yes definitely there are you know other features such as you know you can make you can have images on which you can make uh, in, uh, annotations or upload some images into assessment forms and all of these assessment, assessment forms can be configured based upon uh, the organizational requirements on the left hand side i'll just show a few of the uh, nice features over here right like the schedules 
right? Uh, the nurse can schedule or the clinical manager can schedule a doctor's visit or an internal or an external or a nursing care activity. For example, I know I want to say schedule a fasting blood sugar from between certain dates and for certain times. Now I can do that quickly over here and this will create uh, different events and uh, the nurse can just go to the when, she, when the nurse is in the dashboard the nurse will be able to see these pending activities and uh, perform those activities and capture data against each of those activities uh, the other uh, nice feature is also the medications if you see here in the medications I can see here the current medications the client is on what are the discontinued ones and the current uh, medication administrations so which means the medica the the client is on these medications currently and these are to be administered as per the schedule so we also help the organization to achieve the five rights of medication such as uh, uh, identifying the rested or identifying your client probably using your barcode scanner where you can uh, scan the residents barcode and then scan the drug barcode which takes directly to this screen when we follow that functionality and you uh, and uh, the nurse captures the drug administra administration details uh, using uh, the screen over here and there are other things where you can uh, raise some lab or radiology orders and also uh, capture any incidents that have happened in your at, at the facility now these could be any medication related or non medication related and the process of going through the incident reporting till it is closed uh, the functionality is available uh, to capture the incident process or incident reporting process Similarly, nursing proce procedures, if there was any procedure that was performed or any service that was availed to the, uh, for the client, you know, those, uh, that, the, all that information can be captured over here. And whenever this procedure was performed, there could be a billing impact of, on the client's record. So, uh, so based upon the way this particular procedure is set up, so if, they, if there is a billing uh, impact, so automatically during the billing cycle you will see that you will see this service as a part of the client's bill um few other things i want to touch upon are is the work list for the nurse especially so so if you see here these are all the activities uh based on and the counts of for the nurse to do today. If you say here, like, you know, these are the, there are like 44 Braden scale assessments that are, that a nurse is supposed to do. And I can also go and see patient wise and for, or the client wise and for client Kylie, if I go here, I can see there are like seven different assessments uh, or activities that are pending for the day, which are like three care plans and four different types of assessments. So all this, you know, what we're trying to do is help the nurse or the care staff to just focus on what is supposed to be done for the day uh, by looking at the dashboards or by looking at the pending activities instead of trying to figure out from uh, you know a file or by talking to the, uh, his or her care manager i'll move on to the other modules of, uh, of now uh, like the resident management Again, I see my dashboard here, and as part of again, as I said earlier, this is mostly an administrative or functionality over here. I will see how many uh, clients are on hospitalization leave, home leave, and uh, you know I can also see my bed occupancy rates here. Um, the other thing uh, over here is you know if you see, I can also search for my resident. So let me just go and select my the resident resident. Paul, whom uh, we were dealing with earlier. <clears throat> and I'll just go in and uh, again, uh, for, for each of these residents, you have quick links where you can uh, print some barcodes, you can raise hospitalization leaves or uh, home leaves, or uh, even you know, perform some transfers or bed transfer from within the facility or across facilities. And you can also raise uh, clinical discharges, or there are other options also by going in into the uh, residence record. And over here in the dashboard, again, I see you know, over here, the, what, uh, what is the total invoice amount for this client against which how much payment has been received and what is the pending amount 
uh, or amount that is still due. Um, so service posting is again a, a, a place where you can add more services to the patient's bill in case a nurse or the care staff has forgotten to add a service or record that from her care management module, then the administrator can always do it, post additional services from here. And you can also raise bills, verify bills, and collect uh, amounts against invoices that are raised. Uh, again, this billing module is can be integrated with any government uh, billing departments. Uh, other billing departments, for example, in uh, for Singapore, we have again integrated with the ILTC portal. And uh, what happens is all the invoices raised, this information goes into the ILTC portal and all the subsidies that are received, all the funds that are, are sent or provided by the uh, uh, government agency comes back and sits against the invoices in this portal. So it, this eliminates totally the necessity of creating the bills manually and sending them or and tracking or keeping a track of what has been paid or not paid. Uh, the, finally, you have the inventory and stock management where we support the concept of a store and a substore. You could have any number of stores in, in, in the facility. And uh, uh, again, you know, you got some alerts showing what are the items that are about to expire and the top five depleting items, top expiring items and various other uh, information in, in the dashboard. We also cater to the functionality of the purchase workflow, starting from the purchase request, going through the process of purchase order, goods receipt, and also the supplier returns. And finally, we also have the material management, which is where you can handle the items which are expired or about to expire. Uh, handle the material recalls, uh, adjust stocks for you know any breakages or any unaccounted stock, and also do the, your physical stock taking as uh, you know quarterly or yearly as part of your business process. So, but this is what I intended to show uh, for today. Uh, just very high level workflow, and I hope I was able to provide an overview of the nursing home system and. Uh, I'll give it back, hand it over to Fang from here. Okay, uh, here's a quick rundown of what we've been talking about. <clears throat> uh, we've shown, we've given you an examination of the impending aging population boom. Uh, we've talked about and we've given you an account of rising costs in healthcare today. And um, we've also talked about how innovative tech deployments can meet the challenges of the modern nursing home. And as part of the whole show and tell of things, not only did we show you, talk about the strategies and best practices that elderly care providers such as yourself can use today to number one, raise standards of care uh, <clears throat> and reduce errors in medication management. Uh, number two, maximize the utility of staff and other resources. And you know, we've also shown you the case of an old nursing home that achieved 57% reduction in care administration after the digital transformation. So now we just move on to the next step of, the, <clears throat> of this particular session today, and that's the Q&A. So first message over here is type all your questions in the chat box now. I will actually translate the, the questions and, you know, and make them nice for our speakers today, and I'm going to show you who they are right now. Okay, joining us here, you've already heard from Ryan, who's our elder care specialist, Shirish, who's our transformation expert. Um, I've, I've also now included um, my co-host for this Q&A session. His name is Mr. Nken Singh, and I've already told you that he's a, a veteran of the software industry, especially in the space of healthcare IT. Um, 
Ken Seng, please. Hi, everyone. Yep. Introduce yourself. Yep. Hi, okay. everyone. This is uh, Ken Seng. Uh, okay. Thanks for joining the session today. Okay. Uh, we are ready for your questions. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Ken Seng. Just a reminder, be, before we run out of time for the questions, please uh, type in your, your, your questions in right now if you want to uh, get a fair hearing of it. Um, okay, I'm going to start with, we already have a list building up. So I'm going to start with the first one. And it's uh, specifically, I think this applies to Ryan. Um, you know, in your case study, when you talk about the Singapore nursing home, and you mentioned the, the, the inter, intermediate long-term care, the ILTC and IRMS portals. Can you tell me a little more about that and how um, does it mean, because a lot of the values um, are actually benefits that, that they only benefit the context for, I mean, for nursing homes in Singapore. So is there any way you can, you know, does it, do, do those benefits apply for, for me if I'm in Indonesia? Yeah, so <clears throat> thanks for that question. Um, so our nursing home solution is able to work in your country and we are able to understand the kind of interfaces and the kind of uh, data transfers that happen with your own government. Uh, if you need to interface with any referral management system outside of Singapore or a government portal, we can understand the solution and cater to your uh, IT issues. Second is referral management and IT um, ILTC uh, data passing is just one of them. There are a lot of the uh, features that Shirish has showcased, uh, operational uh, and clinical workflows that the NHS system is able to cater to. Uh, these are configurable, so it will be able to work in your country with just a few items of configura uh, configuration, or we can work with you to understand any customizations that need to be done uh, on your workflow. <clears throat> so it isn't a Singapore-specific solution. Um, you know, a typical problem that facilities, uh, um, you know, uh, may encounter is some uh, cultural pushbacks, you know, from not understanding fully the IT solution that is at hand. Um, you know, some are not familiar with IT. Uh, even. And you know, as I've explained earlier, Liamo is actually a perfect example of a facility who has transitioned, you know, from uh, the old era to the 21st century with automation, uh, with design thinking process and process re-engineering that we've done. All of their staff has actually undergone this transition so we will work with you closely uh, in your country, in your facility, um, so that we will be able to fully understand whether what we have developed already fits your needs or customize according to what you may need in the future. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, the next question. Yeah. Sorry, I'm running through these questions really quickly. Um, the next set of questions uh, is actually for Shirish, I believe, because it talks about um, implementation. Um, talk about the common challenges in, in, in uh, implementation of such a system for, um, let's say, uh, an organization like Liamui, I think, um, when previously they didn't have any IT, and talk about the challenges that they would face putting it out. Yeah, uh, that's a nice one because, you know, we understand that every client, although we say it's an NHS system, right, every client might have a unique set of challenges and unique requirements. And that's where uh, we come in to picture and with our expertise and, you know, with the, uh, with the project team, where we come in and we try to understand your requirements, your processes, your business processes, uh, and we try to align our uh, functionality, our, our workflows with your business uh, workflow and tune them together. So I would say the most, the biggest challenge is would be at this stage, at the stage of uh, you know the requirements understanding and the business process analysis. And once we all agree on that, come to a common understanding, that's where things become a lot, lot easier, and then the implementation process goes on uh, smoothly from there. So uh, I would say that yeah, we have gone through uh, quite a few installations, uh, and you know we know. 
uh, we know what to expect at different stages of the implementation and uh, uh, and and you know we can i'm sure okay our team does a good job in you know in the pro the and uh, help the user you know to uh, uh, or you know provides the user a very smooth implementation experience hey, does does that answer uh, your question fang Sorry, Fang, uh, if you're talking, you're mute. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, <clears throat> thank you for that. Um, and uh, before I move on to the next question, which is uh, for, I think it's for Kian Singh. Uh, Ryan, would you like to add anything else to the Shirish's response? So I think that, uh, okay. Um, to add on to that, we go through, we, we've gone through with Liam Mui, this design thinking process and process re-engineering that I've mentioned with you. Um, but now that we've built a solution, we will be able to quickly scale. Um, if, there, if our solution is very much compatible with your workflows, then it will be a very seamless, very painless implementation um, in your own facility. And um, yeah, so, so we will be able to walk you through with it um, and it will be as painless that we want uh, it to be and you would want it to be. Um, Liam Moy's case, for example, um, all of their staff has undergone a transition, even those non-IT savvy ones. And I would like to emphasize a fact that um, we even have an 81-year-old nurse um, who has actually successfully been trained um, to use our system. Uh, and is now able to handle all the administering of the medication for 50 patients. Uh, for her shift, for her eight hour shift. And we will work with the nursing home staff um, to make this transition implementation and training as painless as possible. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, ultimately when it comes to making an investment to, um, in, in a digital solution, uh, it always comes down to the administrator or essentially the boss or owner of the, the facility. So this next question, I, I suspect, would, would apply to uh, Mr. and Ken Singh because he's usually the one with the first foot in the door talking to people and preaching to them the value of digital transformation. So Ken Singh, a uh, question is, what is the biggest pushback when you step in to an old nursing home and you start talking to the CEO or the administrator about digital transformation? Is it money or is it because they don't quite understand the technology or is it something else? Okay, thank you, uh, Pang Yi. I think that's a very good question. Um, having talked to uh, uh, CEOs from different uh, countries, I think one of the biggest things that the uh, CEO always uh, you know, worry about is yeah, there are two, two or three things that they immediately come to mind. First is, you know, is my staff up to the level, you know, to be able to manage to handle the systems effectively? I think this is a good question. And the other question that typically comes up is, well, I'm not too sure, you know, will it cost a lot of money, you know, because I may not have, you know, the, the amount of money that a hospital would have to implement uh, this uh, system to help me you know, transform my services. So I think these two areas, I'd like to address the first one. Um, having talked to uh, different people and also have, have, having had experience implementing systems across the region, I think the important thing is not so much of, uh, you know, the, 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 whether the staff is not as educated in IT, as opposed to maybe Singapore's uh, staff. I think the most important thing is that whether the system is designed to be intuitive and to be able to be quickly assimilated. Is it designed to actually flow the way the operation should flow? And I think this, this is where uh, Napier's uh, design thinking 
and um, basically uh, our approach in putting a lot of effort in uh, making the user experience a seamless one for the nurses, for the doctors, for the therapists, um, and even pharmacies who are going to use our system in when taking when providing care to the to the patients. I think the design and the thinking that we have put in that we have also demonstrated that even an 81 year old nurse can use this where they had no prior experience so we bring them from a paper system into a first world country system and this is something that we can do to work with the CEOs and the nursing home to bring them to the next level. On the area of uh, money, I think uh, many, you know, as, as with most approaches um, other companies have taken is that you have to put up a big lump sum of uh, money uh, to buy the system. Napier has uh, undertaken a very uh, different approach. We understand the market, uh, we understand the people's concern, especially when it's a step-down care. Uh, so in order to work in this environment, we have actually now used uh, cloud services where there's very little uh, you know, IT uh, people uh, and IT support that's required. Uh, so in fact, Lee Amoy doesn't have quite have an IT person at all. And that's a demonstration of uh, the ease of use in, in the system once we put it up. And there's very little maintenance work that an IT need to do in that uh, setting. So that's number one on the cloud. Second, Napier also provides a uh, easy to uh, uh, invest uh, program where it is uh, subscription driven. So you sign up and you pay yearly rather than you pay a big lump sum upfront. So I think with these two, uh, I think uh, we are actually really going down and working with the CEOs to make sure that the investment is easy the take-up rate is good and the uh, users get to use the best of technology, more importantly, to improve their uh, quality of their work. Uh, that's, that's basically uh, two main things. Uh, over back to you, Huang Yi. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Ken Seng, for that uh, complete comprehensive answer. Um, I have one last one for today, and um, it talks about asking about what's the regular timeline for an implementation, uh, a typical implementation of this nursing home solution that you have? Is it six to 12 months, or 12, 24 months or so? Uh, I think I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna level this at Shirish for starters. Yes, uh, nice question. So again, about the implementation. So, okay, so if your business processes are pretty much aligned with what we have today in our nursing home system and you know, it's not a big change in processes. So these, the implementation could be a uh, timeline could be as low as uh, one to two months because you know, it's all there on the cloud. All you have to do is get, just get trained and start using it. So I would say that would take about one to two months, but now there are some things that need that need to be aligned or configured as per your business, as per your workflows, then I would say this could take uh, anywhere between uh, like six months to nine months or at most a 12 month time frame for implementation. And now this is including your starting from your requirements uh, and, you know, interviews where we have interview sessions with uh, all your users or different types of users and going through the process of, the training, testing, and finally uh, pre go live and go live activities. Okay. What do you think? All right, thank you. Ryan, would you like to add to that? Yeah, so uh, those were good points from Shirish. And if you would, if your processes are very much aligned, uh, as he mentioned, it will be a matter of configuration and not much code changes are needed. That is why we're able to bring it down to just one month or even two months for almost as is uh, processes um, and workflows uh, in your organization. Anything more than that, we will have to do the design thinking approach to understand the customizations that are needed. Um, we are able to scale, especially um, by September. Um, we will 
be able to scale with multi-tenancy and multi-facility. So whether you are a single facility, two facility, or ten facilities within your uh, within the organization, you would have access to view the entire organization or each facility at once. The same case for users. Users can be assigned to look into every facility or assign an overall function as part of HQ. And uh, likewise, the configuration can be done um, <clears throat> in that way. And no coding changes need to be done to assign role-based access to their users. Okay. Okay, actually, Ryan, or um, um, Shirish, or, or even Ken Singh, can you t tell us a little more? Because I, this is a follow up question because I'm also curious myself. Um, on the user aspect of it, um, the, does, the, the, um, does, training, does user training take up a lot of the timeline? Anyone can take a stab at this answer. Shirish? Right, so let me go ahead. Uh, Yes, so user training, uh, so you know, we have all designed the training module, okay, in such a way that, you know, it focuses for the, on, for the, on, based on the user's roles. So you have a specific training for nurses, specific training for the doctors and the administrators. So we have created these training programs. There are training manuals available and there's online help available. So uh, this is, and, and what we have seen is, you know, uh, it, the training, program is very simple and the users are followed the uh, system very well and this shows up that you know it, like when a 81 year old nurse is uh, able to get trained and use the system from day one so I think you know anyone else can use the system after after the training thank you so much for actually joining us over this and part of our thank you is um, free consulting and trial offer that we're offering uh, please sign on today for digital transformation uh, it's a free 30-day trial subscription. Um, and if you cannot wait, because we'll actually be reaching out to each and every one of you um, to talk about this. And we're offering you these things. 30-day free cloud subscription. You can have up to three users, the, the admin person, the doctor, and the nurse. Uh, you can create up to 50 patients online. And we take care of your care management, resident management inventory, as well as a family portal. So if you cannot wait uh, for us to get in touch with you, I can, I, you can just write to me directly and I'll put you through to the right person. Okay then, um, thank you so much. On behalf of our speakers today, on behalf of Napier Healthcare, I'd like to wish you a very, very good afternoon because now it's after 12. And then uh, have a great day. We'll be in touch very, very soon and let's stay engaged. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.